so this Jameis build starts with a 17 inch Jameis XL I picked up. I had some Alex Shimano parts, some nice Richie wheels, Avid brakes and a few other things. It is a Reynolds tubing frame so it's quite nice and it can be run with disc brakes or V brakes. So this bike was a little bit too small for me, I was hoping I could drop bar convert it. But I posted up on a forum that has a bunch of local riders and somebody had a Jameis Dragon Pro that was a size bigger and he was after the Jameis XL size which is the 17 inch. So we organized a swap and then a couple of weeks later this Jameis Dragon showed up. In the deal he also sent me some 27.5 wheels that would fit the Dragon Pro. So it worked out to be a really nice setup. So I sent most of the parts with the Jameis XL because I knew I wasn't going to be using them. I had quite a custom setup in mind. One of the things that I wanted to try was cable disc brakes. So I was thinking either the Avid BB7s or TRP Spire or something like that. I ended up finding some Avid BB7s for quite a good price. And the reason why I wanted to go cable disc brake is so I could use drop bars or alternately swap between drop bars and flat bars. So I tried out some drop bars on this and while the stem was a bit too low you could see that the reach worked out quite nice for me and my size. So I decided to initially set it up with some flat bars and then go from there down the road. So some of the things that I'll be using are these Shimano Alex cranks. It's a triple crank set that is a 104 BCD and it comes with that strangely riveted on outer chain ring. I'll be using those with some Surly stuff. So I'm going to be using a 34 tooth chain ring. Uh, this gearing is just a trial really, based on a bit of education going off uh, local riders. And then a chain tensioner if I need it. And then some ESI chunky grips. I really like these grips, they're left over from a, another build. Braking, I'm going to be using Odyssey brake levers. So these are a BMX brake lever and I can use these with the cable brakes that are the road pull because BMX brakes have the same pull ratio as road levers as well as cantilever brakes and brake cables I'll be using Odyssey items as well. These are a linear cable which are also called compressionless cables and these are the chrome items so they look quite nice as well as being really functional. Linear cables help a lot when using cable brakes. It just takes out that little bit of flex that you can get when hard braking with cable brakes. So these are much firmer than like a, a coil wound cable. So to use those BMX levers, I'm using Avid Road calipers. So these are compatible with Road STI levers, cantilever brake levers, BMX brake levers, and then Road flat bar levers. And I'll be using these with 180 millimeter rotors. I'm over 100 kilograms, I think I'm about 105 kgs. So I have quite a bit of weight to stop and I didn't want to be lacking in the brakes department. This is a half link to sort of dial in the chain a little bit. I've got some Nato bar ends left over. Some nice ride slow die whenever stickers because I'll be going, <laughs> I'll be going slow. Another old retro piece is a height right. So this is basically just a retro dropper post. Um, it's quite simply a spring. Some new brake pads for it. These are quite an aggressive compound as well. Uh, so they might be squeaky, but I'd rather be able to stop well than conserve my ears. I don't <laughs> Pedals, I'm sort of undecided. Um, these more aggr aggressive ones will be a lot better off-road. But uh, yeah, a little bit aggressive for the shins. Starting off with the frame, it definitely needs a, a clean and polish up. It has some scuff marks and stuff that should come off. Hopefully a light polishing compound will get out a lot of those. I don't want to try too hard and make it look perfect because it's going to be an off-road bike anyway. So it's bound to get a few scratches on it over the course. So starting off, I'm just using some soapy water to wipe the frame down. That makes sure that there's no debris on there for when I start polishing it up. Otherwise, we'll just end up polishing it and make it worse. This chainstay protector, I thought I'll replace it, but uh, I thought I'd just give it a quick clean up just to see how it comes up. 
Sometimes they clean up, but other times they don't. This one, it cleaned up a little bit, but um, it'll need replacing. So they can be a little bit difficult to get off, depending on if they're clear coated over or not. And this, I think, was used as a bit of a housing uh, protection. I prefer to use like clear vinyl, so I'll put some of that on later on. But for now, I'm just taking these off. So this is the product I use to polish up my frames. It's basically just like a, a mild cream polish. It gets out finer marks and some paint transfer and scuffs and stuff, but it doesn't cut down deep, so you don't have to be too careful with it. And it restores a bit of the shine to the paint. As you can see over here, the reflection is quite dull. And then over here, it's quite a bit sharper. Ow. So the white came up really nicely. You can see there was a scuff mark just before that Jameis there, and that came off. There are a few paint trips that I could tidy up, but like I said, this is going to be an off-road bike. So I'm sure if I touch up some paint trips now, that I'll probably bash into a tree or, or something stupid and then just make some more anyway. So in the background there, you can see the fork for it. This is a Kona P2 fork. After going off some documents online, I found out that the, the stock fork for the Dragon Pro was about the same length as this Kona P2. I'm quite a big fan of rigid bikes, so I didn't even really consider putting a suspension fork on it. Um, Axel to center, though this Kona P2 fork should work out nicely. I've given it a few test rides sort of around the backyard, just rolling it around, and it seems to handle really nice. Nice and neutral, it doesn't flop to the sides or anything. So I thought I'd assemble the bike and see how it goes. So the handlebar I'll be using on the build is a Ritchie Coyote handlebar. I really like these. It has a little bit of back sweep, but it bumps forward after the stem before it goes back. So it doesn't really decrease reach by having the back sweep. And the stem is a Kona DH Primo, which is another old retro piece. But the handlebars are quite nice and wide, so they give lots of control off-road. So these levers are quite strange. Uh, I used to ride BMX and I always wanted to try some. So I thought with this build, I might as well. <laughs> They're quite a good price and everything. Uh, wait, fuck it. I think they're designed as a two finger lever, but they're really comfortable with one or two fingers, especially using that first little bump there. You get quite a bit of control out of it. So this is my first time setting up Avid BB7 calipers in, I can't even remember how long, longer than this lockdown. So I completely forgot about using their washers. Uh, I realized after putting the wheel in and it was scraping a little bit that it definitely needed some spaces underneath. So they sort of get set up like a V brake pad with washers before and after the caliper. And I changed the quick release skewer so it's on the opposite side to the disc. I do it this way just to avoid grabbing the disc when you tighten the skewer down. It does look a bit worse from the drive side, but it's a lot more practical. I think I might get some uh, anti-theft skewers or some bolt-on skewers just to clean up the look a little bit, but for now this will do. So with the calipers centered on the rotor and the pads centered within the rotor's braking surface, I was good to throw the cable on. These road calipers in this finish actually do look quite nice as well. And I think the road BB7 is the same as the mountain BB7. They just have a different cable pull ratio, which is defined by a cam inside the caliper, I think. With this brake adapter on and the caliper where it wanted to be centered over the rotor, um, the pads didn't come out too easily. So I don't know if that's just specific to this uh, adapter or if it's something to do with how the rotor was centered. I have no idea. I ended up getting them in eventually but it, ju it just took a few more seconds than I initially thought. And then I could throw the cable in. So setting the brakes up was quite simple. 
it's basically just centering the caliper on the rotor and then from there it's all just plug and play. I know in the long term these are going to be a lot easier to maintain as well, even just for the fact that I will never have to bleed these. Um, hydraulic brakes, they work really great and then one day you'll have a busted seal and there'll be brake fluid leaking out. And you'll think, why? Why did this happen? Was I too hard on my brakes? Have I been neglecting them for too long? Why do I deserve this? Why can't I just ride my bike? But if you ride cable brakes, that moment will never happen. All jokes aside, just run whatever you want. I chose to run cable brakes on this bike, but I've got another bike that has hydraulic disc brakes. Um, teach their own, especially if you're gonna run some four piston or six piston brakes. Then yeah, just, just run hydraulic, it doesn't matter. I thought I should mention that this bike didn't originally come with 27.5 wheels. The previous owner of this Dragon Pro frame mentioned that he could fit them so he tried, I think they were 2.1 tyres or 2.0s. So I thought I'd give that a try. It would be nice to have that little bit of extra ground clearance anyway. The 27.5 wheels and tyres only end up being, what, about a centimetre, a centimetre and a bit taller than the 26s. So it's not a huge advantage, but it does give you that little bit extra. So when using these as a single front setup, you could trim that chainring down, but I decided just to get rid of it altogether. You could keep it there or shave it down to act as a bit of a bash guard, but I wanted to cut it off. So going with these lines, it leaves the 104 BCD holes, and then it has these little ledges there to support the chainring anyway. So you can get your hacksaw in there. Um, one of the cuts was a little bit hard to do near the crank arm, um, it was still possible to do though, it just, it was a little bit more fiddly as you can see here. I, I used a lot less stroke in my cuts and then I used two cuts to get it sort of finalised. After making the eight or nine cuts, I filed it all off and cleaned it up a bit. This is the end result. I decided to clean up the crank arm itself from here, so I just wanted it to be a little bit shinier. So I scuffed it up with a scotch brite pad and then used some auto sole over it. And then after that I used some wax. This is just regular car wax. You can also clear coat the cranks, but clear coating doesn't really stick to polished surfaces too well. I've done it before and um, because your shoes sort of rub up against the crank arm, it ends up almost peeling. Um, it looks torn and stuff, so it looks quite awful. So I just recommend waxing the cranks. It does a pretty good job of preventing smudges and stuff as well. It's certainly not like a set it and forget it, but it's a lot easier to redo. So what I'm screwing in there is similar to the old one key release system. So instead of using a crank removal tool, you can just undo that eight millimeter hex or allen key and that will pull the crank arm off with it and they look quite tidy as well so i decided to use these pedals they'll be a little bit more shoe <laughs> or comfy shoe friendly i won't be using it the first time off-road anyway so I thought I'd save my shins, save everything, and just use some comfortable flat pedals. So coming into the single speed setup, I did eyeball this beforehand. So I've already got the spaces all cut. This is a alloy radiator pipe that I've used a pipe cutter just to cut into the width that I need. So it works out a heck of a lot cheaper just to buy like a length of alloy radiator pipe and then cut that up into about 
five or six complete spacer kits. I've heard you can also use PVC piping as well, although I haven't personally done that. So the hub on this bike actually sounds quite nice as, as well, as a bit of a benefit. And I am running the quick release technically backwards. So I'm using it pushed through from the drive side. Setting up the rear brake went pretty smoothly. I used the spaces the same as on the front one. So just setting it up, making sure that the caliper was aligned so that the pads were in the center of the rotor's uh, braking surface, just to give it the best chance of braking properly and to make sure there's going to be no weird noises or braking feel. Now when setting the length of the chain with a single speed bike, I don't have an eccentric bottom bracket and I don't have horizontal dropouts. So this is just a vertical dropout frame. So really I'm, I'm going to have to use a chain tensioner, but to get it as close as I can, I did pick up those half links so I can put those in if it lands like how it is. So normally you can't connect those two links together, but if you replace one of those with the half link, then that half link allows the chain to be mated again. So basically it's just a link that can link unfamiliar links. <laughs> so you'll only ever need one of these per chain, like per bike that you do. But I picked up a couple just so I can do other setups as well. So I used the quick link after that. So I did take out like a couple of links. The only downside to half links is that you have to use um, like single speed cogs, you can't use them on narrow wide ones. So this amount of chain flex looked like it would be okay and this chain line looked nice as well. I think once the chain stretches I'll have to take out that half link. I won't know for sure though until I give it like a few rides because the chain definitely will stretch. <laughs> because of my long legs and the geometry of the bike I had to get a longer seat post. Um, it, the bike didn't come with a seat post, but it was only a 27.2, which is really common. They're pretty much everywhere. So this longer seat post, it gives me quite a bit extra, but I only really needed a couple of centimeters. Fitting the height right is quite simple. It's really just a few pieces, which also means that it's low maintenance. So there's, there's like no servicing really. Um, you probably have to adjust it every now and then. I used some Loctite on the bolts just to make sure, the nuts, just to make sure that things would stay in spec. Um, you grease the seat post and it slides up and down nicely. This is the second height right that I've used and I really like using them. Only thing with this bike is that I don't actually have a, seat, a quick release seat post clamp to fit. So that's why you can see that shim there. This is the only thing that I could make work. Um, it does work, but I think I'll have to try and find something that's a little bit better suited, just so I still have that lip around the top of the seat post clamp. Um, it is a bit of a strange size to find in a quick release form, so I'll probably have to modify something. I don't know, but this works for testing and for now anyway. Seat goes up, seat goes down, seat goes up. Now that's installed, it's time to go ride it.
So overall, the test ride was a success. The brakes were probably the biggest variable. I didn't know how they were going to react <laughs> with my weight and stuff. I haven't used cable disc brakes in quite a while, but they performed really nicely. I did have quite aggressive brake pads in there and the 180 millimeter rotors probably helped that a little bit. But yeah, great braking. The steering felt nice. Uh, the gearing was too low for the gravel in that, but I'm hoping it's great on single track. So I did try it a little bit on some single track, but it wasn't too hilly or anything. It was actually pretty well flat, but it could get me around some of the tight and technical stuff. The flight saddle was quite comfortable. I've never tried one of these with the cutout and it, it kind of looks a little bit goofy, but it's really grown on me, especially considering how comfortable it is. I think I prefer this to the original flight. Handlebars and grips were comfortable, but they weren't really a variable. I knew that they were gonna perform nicely. The 275 wheels, they were pumped up a little bit too hard um, because I was riding like on a mix of gravel and stuff, I didn't want them to be too soft. But they cleared nicely. I think with some mud build up, things would get a little bit tight. But it'll be interesting to see how it goes on some single track. So thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.